we're off. Nice. It's a bright sunny day. There's shadows all over the place. Holy shit. But I want to get this down. I'm traveling back home. What can I do? It's a windy day. I'm driving all over the place. I've got a loose windshield wiper over here as I rack up more miles on my 2002 Toyota Sienna minivan. And which in my opinion is the perfect road vehicle for a road comic. Uh, it's great mileage. I mean, there's other cars that get better mileage, to be sure. But this one also has there's a lot of space, a lot of room. It's easy to drive. Easy to maintain. It's a good road car. It's lasted me now over 310,000 miles. And uh, it's still going strong, baby. I just got to get that windshield wiper with that. Had a fun weekend. We were in Lakeview, Michigan. We were in Battle Creek, Michigan, and it was kind of interesting because it's Valentine's Day weekend, and both venues were expecting huge turnouts. Uh, but we actually got kind of small audiences, about 20, 20 or 20 or so at each gig, each night. And uh, I bring that up because it still turned out to be a lot of fun. It was almost more fun for me just to have those smaller audiences and being able to connect with them individually, one-on-one, -on -one, in a more intimate setting, than have bigger crowds where you have to deliver more of a canned performance. I actually like the challenge of the small crowd because it gets me out of my head. It gets me out of the scripted routine. It forces me into the moment. It forces me to pay attention and, you know, keep on my toes, stay sharp. And when I do that, I actually come up with more material that I generate for later on to use in the show. So I really actually have a lot of appreciation for the smaller crowds. A lot of people are like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to deal with a small crowd. I, I actually have a lot of appreciation for it because I developed new material over the weekend. You know, having to do a lot of improv with them and slow down your pace a little bit, jumble up some of the material. My co-star uh, in the He Said, She Said show, Katrina Brown calls it uh, joke salad or something like that, material salad, where you just, you know, you just toss it all up, blend it all up. You wind up doing it in a different order. I find that to be very, very, very effective creative exercise for me. So I appreciate the small crowds. I really had a good time this weekend. Those were, they were fun, they were small, but they were a lot of fucking fun. Not very many people, but like I said last night, it was the perfect people. You know, I think, uh, I think the idea there is, I just always try to look to make sure the audience is having a good time. I just try to give them their money's worth make sure they have as much fun as fucking possible. I'll stay on stage as long as it takes to make sure that happens. You know, without wearing out my welcome. Always leave them wanting more. That's rule number one. A lot of, a lot of uh, comedians I hear like, man, they weren't giving me nothing. That crowd sucked. They weren't giving me nothing. Well, it's like they're not there to give you something. They already fucking gave you their money in the form of a ticket purchase. They are more, they're already giving you their time, you know, and they've got more than just... Uh, a ticket purchase invested into the show. They have, maybe have a babysitter on the clock. They've bought food and drinks at the venue. You know, they're maybe taking their time out of their fucking TV schedule or whatever the hell else they might have going on in their lives. It's not just the ticket price they have invested in the show. They have a lot invested in the show. So they've already given you something. As a performer, it's your job to now then give back give them a good time and it might not result in them laughing their fucking asses off it might result in them just paying attention to you i don't laugh at every goddamn thing every comedian says but sometimes i enjoy i enjoy it very much i just don't necessarily always laugh it's kind of funny i was talking about this yesterday in the video blog with derek about how there's just some way that you say certain things in a certain way in a certain dynamic that just makes people belly laugh and respond in a visceral, emotional, somewhat uncontrolled way. That's kind of difficult to do, and it's not, it's not gonna happen for all people in all situations at all times. And as performers, we need to realize that and then shift gears possibly to make it happen. Instead of just getting up there and reciting your material, actually fucking deliver it from the heart, in the moment, be true and real. Don't, you know, just do a canned performance. That's a recital, that's not a performance. That's what children do when they take a, you know, a, a year's worth of fucking ballet lessons and you go see the recital where they just show you all the moves that they've practiced and have committed to memory. Is that what you want to do? I don't want, that's not what I want to do. I don't, I don't want to be the comedian with the best memory. I just want to be a guy who gets up there and has fun in the moment with the crowd, no matter how big or small. 
And when you do that and you always have fun, they'll have fun with you. You'll never have a bad show. You can go on and on and on and on forever. I'm also not one of those guys that always gives uh, or always uh, gives the crowd credit. Like, you know, if you can give them credit for being a good crowd, you can get, definitely give them credit for being a shitty crowd. There are definitely shitty audiences that I've performed for. You know, just flat out fucking rude. You know, they weren't there to have a good time. They, it didn't matter what they had invested in the show. It didn't matter to them anyway. They were just invested in their own self-amusement, which is fine, but I'm not going to be there to be tooled out. I'm not going to be a jackass as background noise. I, I don't want to be annoying. I think like, this is being annoying just to get on stage, just to get a paycheck at that point. I think that's kind of retarded. Because <laughs> what's the fucking point? You're just forcing the issue. Then you're up there trying to demand people's attention. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm supposed to be doing my job right now. That's this is what's supposed to be going. They clearly don't fucking want it. Now, that said, I, I think shows need to be promoted properly in order to get the right kind of a crowd, to, to attract the right people who know what's going to want, go on and who will respond appropriately. Some of these events you get booked for, though, you know, the people in charge, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So you just get, you wind up in a shitty situation. But for the most part, with the shows that I'm doing, the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick show and the He Said, She Said show and the game show and even just going out on the road and doing my one man show, like, you know, as a headliner, I don't run into a whole lot of the situations where I wind up as background noise. Every once in a while, one of those bullshit situations sneaks itself through, and it's like, fuck, how did I get here? God damn it. I'm usually pretty good at screening that bullshit out before I even take the booking. But if you can give them credit for being a good crowd, you can definitely give them credit for being a shitty crowd. I'm not an advocate of just always, no matter what, just taking full responsibility for the night being a bust. Sometimes those motherfuckers fucked up. However, I hear too many comedians too often will complain about the audience. Well, they weren't giving me nothing, man. They weren't giving me nothing. They weren't giving me nothing. They were giving you their attention. You know, maybe try being a little bit more engaging instead of just being, re instead of just reciting the material right, like you normally would. You know, drop the jokes. Drop the, drop the canned material. Go for something in the moment. Start working the crowd. Do whatever. I don't know. Whatever it fucking takes. Or just accept the not laughs. Maybe they're just laughed out. Sometimes that happens to me. I know that I've gone to some shows which are hilarious, but I laughed so much and they didn't even go that long. Maybe like the 90 minute show, but I laughed so fucking much. And the first guy, like the feature act, the, the, the headliner was hilarious. I just didn't have anything left in the juice, the, 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 the tank for him. I've been that way as an audience member. Something else I would recommend to a lot of comedians is experience life as an audience member a little bit more. Like a true audience member, not a comedian evaluating another comedian set, but as a guy just experiencing what it's like to be an audience member. Figure that out. Go to more comedy shows and concentrate on that. Look at that dynamic. And then incorporate the lessons from that into your set. But what do I know? I'm just a fucking asshole. Anyway, this is Jared Dog from The Bar Comic. Hit the subscribe button if you like this type of shit. Just me talking about my bullshit when I'm traveling down the road from gig to gig. I'm on uh, Facebook under The Bar Comic. I'm on Instagram under The Bar Comic. I'm on all that shit. Uh, TheBarComic.com, JaredDogComedy.com. I got plenty more videos up there. Anyway. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.